Next to me here is my personal Kia EV6, of which I have leased for 24 months. This is really my daily driver, what I commute to and from the shop with. And we're gonna be putting this car to the test with tons of different products out there, especially in the protection category. This is going to be a long series we're gonna be doing, making updates every few months to see how the ceramic coatings we put to the test are actually doing. In a previous video, Jordan and I I coated the windshield on my EV6 with three different glass coatings all across the windshield to see which one should you actually purchase. We are also have an upcoming video talking about different paint coatings we're going to be using on this where we're going to literally coat every single panel with a different ceramic coating. But today is all about wheels. We have three of the top tier wheel coatings on the market right now and a paint coating that we're gonna be installing to all four wheels, comparing which one installs the easiest, which one lasts the longest, and which one has the best performance. So welcome back to another out of spec detailing video here from Clear Detailing in Northern Colorado. Let's jump into it. I have really been excited for this series, putting all different types of ceramic coatings on my personal daily driver. I really think ceramic coatings can be one of the most challenging products out there to test, really because they can last a very long time. It's really funny to me how this ceramic coating industry has evolved. When I first started detailing was when ceramic coatings really started becoming very prevalent. And it's really funny these days, you'll see a new coating brand come out and they're advertising a 10 plus year coating, but they've been in business for less than a year. So how does that really work? Now, I, there's a lot of people who are saying, oh, we do lab tests, we do this, we've tested stuff, or we're just white labeling another company's product. In my opinion, it's very hard to judge a book by its cover with these coatings. A lot of them over promise and under deliver. I, in the ceramic coating world, am understanding that ceramic coatings are not snake oil. I think there's a lot of salesmen out there and a lot of ceramic coating companies and detailers alike that basically advertise ceramic coatings as this magic snake oil that you never have to wash your car again. You can light the hood on fire and oh my gosh, the ceramic coating's still there. What does that actually tell the customer? In my opinion, it's all marketing baloney. And today we're talking about some other marketing that I don't really agree with, and that is wheel coatings. In front of me here, we have three of what I would consider the probably top three pro consumer grade ceramic coatings out there. And this starts with CarPro, Gion, and G-Technic. Now, everybody's gonna say, why didn't you test this one? Why didn't you test that one? I've looked and this is really where I see a lot of people go. You go CarPro, you go Gion, G-Technic. Now there's other companies out there like Adams, which is very focused towards the DIY guys, but are blurring the lines of DIY and professional grade coatings. So it's very hard for me when I have one vehicle with four wheels on them to test 30 different ceramic coatings. So please be kind to me and understand these are the ones I've chosen for my test. If you want a different one, Test it on your own vehicle and let me know what you think of the results. Now this video really stems from the fact that I am not really a huge fan of ceramic coatings that are dedicated for wheels. For one, I find that they don't really last all that long and they're a real pain in the butt to install because they have a high amount of solids for those really hot wheels and brakes. We'll talk about that more when we get into this. What I've instead really been using for basically eight plus years is paint coatings on wheels. And especially working with EVs, it seems to me that paint coatings work a heck of a lot better than wheel coatings. So I'm really putting my money where my mouth is here and we're gonna make a video on it. So we're gonna be testing three wheel coatings, one paint coating and seeing which one is easiest to install, which one's the most affordable, which one you should choose and which one has the best performance out of all these. Now, of course, we're not doing a six year test on this. That would be a little bit crazy to do for a YouTube video. You guys wouldn't see this until like, almost 2030 or something like that would just be kind of insane because at that point we're going to have 17 new ceramic coatings from all of these companies in front of me here so we're going to be doing really a two-year test on these now the whole rationale for this is every single wheel both the face and the barrel we're going to be coating with one dedicated wheel coating or paint coating and see how they 
last. We're going to be doing updates throughout, you know, every couple of months, the big kind of timelines of six months, one year, one and a half years, and two years to see is one better than the other or am I full of crap and the wheel coatings are way better than paint coatings. I'm really anxious to test this out. So let's talk about our contenders here. First off is Seacourts Deluxe. Now, CarPro has been a very known name in the industry. When I first started, Seacourts UK 3.0 was all the rage. They had one of the best ceramic coatings out on the market, and everybody seemed to really flock towards CarPro. Now, I've used Deluxe before, and honestly, I've hated using it. But let's just talk a little bit about this product, talk about its price point, the longevity, all what we're getting at here. So first off, this starts at $39.99 for a 30 mil coating. In all honesty, that's pretty inexpensive, especially for a dedicated wheel coating. The interesting thing you'll notice here on the box, this is actually a plastic and wheel coating. Now, first off, in my opinion, those are two completely different surfaces because you have textured plastic that is extremely porous. It really soaks in ceramic coatings. I think having that as the same product for a dedicated wheel coating is a little strange. Now this boasts a one year lifespan on this. Now, if you're asking me spending the time to remove your wheels, do the barrels, do the face of the wheels, only having 12 months of longevity seems to be a little on the low side for me. But what you really find in the industry with really high end or kind of really good ceramic coating companies is they under promise and over deliver where I feel like a lot of the industry has gone to over promising eight, 10, 12 year lifetime coatings and completely under delivering. So I do like that a lot of these companies are very conservative on their lifespan. Now, one thing we need to talk about with this testing is that Lifespan really depends on every single car. My EV6 would be completely different to my Model 3 Performance doing this test. My Model 3 Performance is really kind of my weekend fun car. This is my everyday driver, so it's not gonna get washed as often. It's going to be in those nastier conditions more often than my Model 3 Performance. The Model 3 is also gonna see heavier track time. It's also gonna see different canyon use, so it's very hard to compare. And one criticism that I have for a lot of detailers out there who are making content with ceramic coatings, they'll take a hood, they'll do 16 different ceramic coatings on it, they'll leave it outside, they'll wash it every so often. Is that really realistic of what people are actually experiencing on their car? Because I find people keep their cars inside more often than a hood just sitting outside. They're also washing it more frequently and you're also seeing people wash it completely differently, taking them through car washes, taking them through brush car washes or hand washing them in the proper way. So C courts here, I think will be an interesting contender my experience with this product has been it's very hard to install you get a lot of high spots with it easily i preferred this on satin or matte finish wheels over glossy this stuff just came off like honey and molasses and if you know me i am not a huge fan of that one thing that c courts boasts with this is it is 50 percent silica so they call this a very hard glass coating that goes on plastic and wheels a little strange there next we move to a product I have never even tested, but this is made by Gion, and this is Gion Rim. Now this is $49.99 for a 30 mil bottle. All of these prices are going to be at 30 mil bottles. So just take that into consideration. This is only a six month coating. Six months, okay. Again, going back to, I think Gion's a little conservative on their lifetime and longevity, but yeah, six months. I think first off, this is gonna be the one that people skip over because you're already paying $10 more than the C cords and it lasts half the amount of time. So that's a little bit of a negative there. Now, Gion says that this is rated up to 572 degrees. Now again, going back to this, I really don't think 99.9999% of people need a wheel coating that is rated up to those high temps. I have found that on my cars, paint coatings, even that have been on wheels, that have been on track, that have been on heavy, heavy canyon drives, 
last perfectly fine. That is an extreme amount of temperature. Think about what tires melt at and can actually explode at. Like you're not running your tires at 500 degrees. How the hell are your wheels getting to 500 degrees? Now understand under heavy braking, heavy track use, you can get your rotors glowing hot thousands of degrees. Does that really go to the wheel that quickly and degrade the coating? I don't know. Next over here, we have G-Technic C5 wheel armor. Now this is actually a product that I use quite a bit and I was pretty happy with it because it installs quite well, but it doesn't really have the huge longevity of a paint coating from my findings. Now this retails for a 30 ml bottle at $57.99. This also has a 12 month lifespan. I really think if you're doing a wheel coating for a company, you need to have two, three years for wheel coatings. It just seems like a ton of work to go in there, remove the wheels, coat the barrels, coat the face of the wheels, get them perfectly cleaned, coat it, and have to do that every single year. Now that's my opinion. Again, these can last longer, but it just seems to be a little interesting there. They also boast on this that this is matte and satin safe. So you can use this on glossy wheels, matte wheels, satin wheels, whatever it may be. Now, personally, I found even something like a glossy paint coating, i.e. Gian Mo's Evo over here, can go on matte or satin finish wheels and not disturb it at all. It will deepen the look of the wheel, but it's not gonna do anything different than these dedicated wheel coatings over here. Lastly, we come to Gion Mo's Evo. Now this is the consumer grade coating to what I use here at the shop. I am a certified Gion ceramic coating installer, but I will tell you, that doesn't mean I think Gion is the best company out there. They just fit a lot of my ideas and morals behind warranted coatings. And I really fell in love with their infinite base type one that I install on basically all of my customers' cars here. I think it's a realistic warranty of five years. And then after that, I really think around, honestly, the three to five year mark, your car needs to get repolished and recoated. So I really am not into eight, 10, 12 year ceramic coatings or lifetime coatings for that matter. I just personally don't think it makes a lot of sense. Gion Mo's Evo over here. Now in this box and this bottle is a 50 mil bottle, but the 30 mil price, you get the same exact kit here is $64.99. Now this as a standalone paint coating is a 36 month longevity. What's that gonna look like on the wheels? I don't know. We're gonna see in about two years to see which one actually lasts the longest. Now I'll tell you, one of the amazing things about Gion Mo's Evo over here is the install. There is not an easier ceramic coating on the market to install than Mo's Evo. It is so freaking easy. Now it is very different to other ceramic coatings in terms of the flash time. We'll get into that more, but essentially, what I think is tricky and where a lot of DIY folks really struggle with ceramic coatings is knowing when to wipe them off. You see, one of the biggest issues is a company, let's say CarPro will say, you have one to two minutes to wipe off this ceramic coating. That is completely different here in Colorado on a 90 degree heat day with low humidity than it is to Florida when it's a 90 degrees, super high humidity. It's also very different here in the winter in Colorado when we may have a snowy, a little bit more humid day or a super dry day and it's 30 degrees or it's negative 10 degrees outside. So you need to understand that flash times are all based on the environment around you, the dew points, the humidity, the temperature, all of that plays into the factor. So that's where I see people struggle with ceramic coatings the most. And that's where I think Gion Mo's Evo is one of the easiest because it bonds within five seconds of being applied to the wheel. And really you can wipe it off within 30 seconds. This one actually sweats. It's heavily polyxylazine based where a lot of the other coatings are SiO2 based. We can get really into the weeds with this stuff, but this is really why I've gone to Gion for a lot of their coatings. I really am not a person who likes SiO2 coatings at all. They're tacky. They feel like molasses. <clears throat> 
deluxe over here. You'll see what I mean by that. To the point of like, you're literally wiping the ceramic coating off and it's just curling the towel. That's not fun to deal with. You wanna put a ceramic coating on there. You wanna feel the protection. That can either be honey or molasses wiping that off, or it can be absolute perfect slickness with something like Gion Moe's Evo. So I may be a little biased in this of my preference on this, but do understand we're still gonna be using these on all of the wheels. We're gonna be cleaning them with the same product. They're gonna get washed and cleaned at the same exact time, treated exactly the same in the same condition, same environment on the same exact vehicle. So hopefully you can understand that. Now, next process we need to do, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to be wrapping the face of these wheels just where the chrome strip is with some black vinyl on these. So I need to do that I'm gonna pull them off. So if you do notice like, hey, your wheels were chrome, now all of a sudden they're black, that's why that's happening. But I actually wanna pull the wheels off, get them perfectly cleaned. I'm gonna quickly polish all of them just to make sure there's nothing on there so we can have an even comparison between all of them. Put the vinyl on it, put the ceramic coating on it, and you're gonna see how I install each ceramic coating so stay tuned for that. So we're now ready to put the coatings physically on the wheels. Now, before we do this, I want you to understand what I've done in preparation for the wheels. Now they will all be cleaned in the exact same way all of the chemicals exactly the same, the process exactly the same, so that we have the best chance possible for an even playing field for all. So what I did, went through, washed, decontaminated the wheels, and then I actually went in and polished the entire face of the wheel using a three inch Rupes yellow foam pad, Oberk two in one, one step polish. And then I actually did end up vinyl wrapping all of the kind of diamond cut finish. I just thought for two years, this is a way better look having them gloss black, then kind of the diamond cut wasn't a huge fan of that. So important that all the wheels have been cleaned exactly the same way. Also, before we apply the coating, a very important step. This is Gion Prep. This is what we use here at the shop. Basically, anytime we install a ceramic coating, I don't really like isopropyl alcohol. This removes all polishing oils, fingerprints, any leftover residue, protectants, whatever it may be that is on there. Now, I do this twice when I do a wheel. So I essentially spray down the face of the wheel, wipe it with a microfiber, let it dry. Spray it once again, do the entire face again. Then I do that on the inside of the barrel. So we're gonna be coating the face and the barrels with our respective coatings. Now, with these coatings, I am going to be using new applicators and new wipe off towels on every single one so that we're not cross contaminating them. Now, I will tell you, I am not going to use the applicators that come with the ceramic coatings because I've had some issues with those in the past. I don't like how they install, it's very annoying. What I'm gonna be using is these auto fiber, basically coating applicators. The cool thing about these, you can actually kind of squish them in. So when you're coming into little nooks and crannies like this, it makes your life a heck of a lot easier. Now, with this, they also have a hydrophobic barrier in them. And I much prefer these because you're not wasting as much coating. If you're using some other applicators, it gets soaked into the foam, that's just wasted coating that you're not going on to protecting your wheel here. Now for me, a few things that I want to understand with this process. I really wanna see not only which one performs best, but also which one is easiest to apply. For me, having a ceramic coating that is miserable to apply and doesn't come off properly, we talked about this earlier, makes it not one that I'm gonna pick up every time. Now, if the performance far exceeds the other ones, okay, then I'll go grab that, deal with the annoyances of actually wiping off the coating, but it's important to know for me as a professional detailer, for you behind the camera as maybe a DIY guy, having a coating that goes on easy plays a lot into the role. If you have a coating that's hard to do, you may actually end up causing more damage than an easier one. So I hope that makes sense. That's in terms of leaving high spots and things like that. So I wanna try and do this exactly the same. Now, our respective coatings, I'll tell you which wheels they're going to go on. So we're gonna use G-Technic C5 wheel armor on the passenger front wheel. We're going to use CarPro Deluxe on the passenger rear wheel, and then the driver's side is gonna be all Gion. Now I wanna put the paint coating at the front because arguably, yes, you're gonna get more brake dust, a little bit more heat up front. So I'm gonna put the paint coating and C5 on the front axle, rim on the driver's side rear, and 
CarPro Deluxe on the passenger side rear. So that'll be how we're gonna do it. And what I think we'll probably end up doing maybe a year into this, I'll rotate the tires so that the wheels can be switched around. Now I know it's not ideal. Ideally what we could do is literally every month kind of swap the positions around. I guarantee I would get confused with that. So let's keep it simple. Let's keep it easy to go. Now, within these, I also wanna talk about with each coating, what the applicators come with, what comes in the box, what the directions are. Now, I'm going to be using whatever it says on the box in the instruction manual if I have to go find a video for how long you need to leave this on. Now, again, this changes for every single environment you are in. So, on the side of this box, it says, perfect the wheels, so you wanna clean them, you wanna keep them out of the elements, of course, you wanna degrease the wheel with a panel prep, i.e. using Gion Prep here, then you soak the application pad, several drops of the product, spread onto no more than half of the wheel for this, and remove within 30 to 60 seconds. So that sounds pretty quick and efficient. So we're not gonna work on the whole wheel. Now, when I install this, I'm gonna bring you up close and coat one of these spokes. The whole rationale behind that, I want to tell you how these products are applying because they're gonna feel extremely different going from the paint coating to even something like CarPro Deluxe and then everything in between, I'll give my thoughts and feelings on that. But let's get this box opened up. Now, with this particular one, I ended up getting the 15 mil bottle. I don't need 30 mils of this because we're just doing it on one wheel. So here's our very tiny little bottle. Look how cute this little guy is. That's pretty funny. And also inside the box are some of the worst applicators that come with any ceramic coating in the market. So in this little bag, you get a cool little G-Technic sticker. If you'd like to put that on your vehicle and represent, hey, this is my ceramic coating there. And then you get these basically cotton applicators that are like made for makeup and they are absolutely terrible. They leave lint everywhere, they're annoying to use. Now, the only nice things with these is they're kind of easy to like maneuver in here, but these things fall apart. I've used G-Technic coatings forever. I, I used to only use G-Technic coatings and these things, absolutely terrible. They literally go in the trash can anytime I open up a new box. There's also, a nice little instruction manual in here for you, which I think is nice to have, especially for those DIY guys that don't really know um, exactly how to install said ceramic coating. Even for me testing, it's hard to know, okay, does this coating need to stay on the wheel for 10 minutes? Does it need to come off in 30 seconds? What's everything in between? So you have this very large instruction manual. The funny thing that G-Technic does is they have every single coating on here that they offer. So basically you get this in every single one. So I'll read through this quickly, see if there's anything else for the wheel armor. Seems like it's the exact same thing. Um, the only thing it says is afterwards, let it cure for 12 hours before getting it rainy or driving the vehicle. So should be pretty straightforward. Let me bring you in and let's start coating. G-Technic C5 with the tiniest, cutest little bottle ever. So one thing I wanna tell you about this is when you crack this open, this will be under some pressure, especially here at Colorado. Um, you know, things normally have to travel from sea level up here, meaning that these, they won't explode, but essentially it'll shoot liquid out of the cap, wasting the ceramic coating. So what I do is basically put it in here, spin the cap off of it, and as you can see, it already came off on there. So I'm gonna apply a few drops here. Again, I wanna show you a little bit more up close of what this looks like. So I'm gonna get this kind of saturated in here. You'll see it goes on. It's actually very smooth. So that's a good start. It doesn't feel super sticky. I actually really like how this coating goes on. And again, I've used this coating quite a bit, so I have a good rough idea of it. Now, it says you wanna wait 30 to 60 seconds with this. It doesn't say what you're looking for here, which I think is hmm, a little bit challenging, especially for understanding different climates and things like that. What I mean by that is, some coatings will sweat, some coatings will rainbow. A lot of the heavily SiO2 based coatings when this starts to really rainbow, that means it's ready to come off. But yeah, this doesn't say you're looking for anything. So it'll be kind of interesting. Now, I'm not going for perfection here. I just wanna show you up close, give you my feelings of how it comes off and things like that. And um, then I'll do the entire face of the wheel. But I think this is a good way to show you a small section to be able to do it. 
So let me wait here for a few seconds and then let's see how this goes on. We've waited our desired around 60 seconds. I'm kind of on the edge of, I like to push things a little bit. I'd rather leave it on there a little bit longer than a little bit less and not really get the coating completely bonded to there. So we're gonna be using Costco microfibers here. I'm not gonna spend $150 getting all of the different towels for each ceramic coating. We're gonna use the same thing all the way through. So as I start to wipe this off, look how nice that comes off actually really nice nice and smooth and immediately i feel some serious slickness here so that is one huge benefit to this that i very much like so i'd say on the application side it's feeling pretty darn easy i'm not seeing a bunch of residue coming off or that is not coming off that's an important thing and i think you'll see that with deluxe maybe they've changed their formulation and i'll be quite surprised with it but man that feels absolutely slick gonna grab my scan grip light you can see we still have tons of scratches if you can see it from there but honestly that went on pretty smooth not seeing any coating haze leftover residue or anything like that so what I'll do now I'll get the entire face of the wheel coated the barrel coated we'll get this put back on the vehicle then we'll grab our next wheel and try out our next coating. So, so far, I think this is pretty good. Price point's decent on it. Um, you know, definitely would get a 30 mil bottle. I wish they offered a 50. You can absolutely do an entire set of wheels with a 30 mil bottle. You don't use a ton. A little goes a long way with ceramic coatings. I know it sounds crazy that you can probably do two wheels out of this tiny little jar, but yeah, pretty impressive. So really thrilled actually with how this went on. Let's see how the longevity is. Next on our front axle, on our driver's side here, this is going to be Gion Moe's Evo. Now again, this is the oddball of the bunch. This is the only paint coating we're gonna be putting head to head against the rest of the wheel coatings. This is also the most expensive one for a 30 mil bottle. Now again, in my personal opinion, I think what happens with dedicated wheel coatings versus paint coatings is manufacturers can now sell you an extra bottle of coating instead of you just basically having a paint coating. So in my opinion, it's a way for them to just get more money. Now, at the end of the day, do brake temps get high at some point? Yes, they will. But I've really found that Gion Mo's Evo has been pretty darn good. I've also been playing with different paint coatings on wheels, using stuff like Adams Graphene Advanced. I played with Infinite Base Type 1, which is what's on my Model 3 Performance. It's lasted almost two and a half, maybe even close to three years now. And it literally looks like the same that it used to. So I've been pretty thrilled with it. Now again, for this, it is the most expensive of the bunch. You're pretty much almost getting close to double of what CarPro Deluxe is. So one thing Gion always does is has probably the fanciest packages in the entire coating market. Gion spends a ton of money on marketing, their branding, all of the packaging. In my opinion though, what actually swayed me from not trying Gion early on in my detailing days was I felt like, hmm, a company who's really trying that hard at just packaging maybe doesn't have enough good products so that you're paying for packaging. I haven't found that to be true with every single product. There's definitely some Gion products I absolutely do not like and absolutely will not use and cheaper competitors are better. But I think a lot of people can look at a coding company like Gion and go, wow, they just spent a ton of money on their packaging. Maybe their stuff's not all it's cracked up to be. But inside the box here, again, Gion Moe's Evo. This is the consumer grade version. I have infinite base type one here that I use on my customers and clients vehicles. So we slide this open here. And inside we have a few goodies. First off, of course, we have our coating bottle. Now, this is a 50 mil bottle. I didn't purchase the 30 mil. I had this on hand, so do understand your bottle is not gonna be this big, especially compared to the C5 that we just opened. We also have a coating applicator, which is very similar to my auto fiber block, but I throw these away immediately. Don't like these at all. I don't like the texture they've done here on their microfiber. It kind of makes the coating splotchy in my impression, doesn't lay on as even. Now on the back here, you have this micro suede applicator as well. Don't really like these either. So these really just get pitched for me and I pick up one of these to apply Gion Mo's Evo. In here, you also have some other marketing goodies. You have this little maintenance booklet. You have a big 
um, basically instruction manual, just like we had with C4. It's gonna take you through every single product they have, how to install it, yada, yada, yada. You also get some branding in here, GNI stickers. You have this little sticker here, which you can select which coating you put on, the date of application, put it in your door seal if you'd like. I don't often do that. And then you also just have another little sticker pack here. Nice stuff. A little bit overkill, if I'm going to be honest. I mean, upstairs, I probably have, gosh, at least a hundred bottles of this stuff that I've pre-used. I'm saving it for this like big mural that I'm wanting to do here at the shop. But anyways, let's try out the paint coating on the wheels here. So again, this has already been cleaned, prepped, everything, it's good to go. Let me bring you in closer, show you how it applies. Moe's Evo. This is an interesting one. Now, I've said before, I think this is the easiest of the bunch to apply, but you kind of have to work quick with this. So, Gion wants you to put a nice thick layer on here and then wipe it within 15 to 30 seconds. That's how quickly this bonds. Now, the tricky thing, if you've been playing around with coatings, you're used to maybe doing a whole hood, you have to shrink your area down. So trying to do an entire wheel face is not ideal. So I just wanna show you what it does here. Now, this product is heavily polyxylazane based, which means that it flashes very different. So this is actually a product that sweats versus essentially rainbows. It's a very crazy product. So I'm gonna apply this. You're gonna see it goes on very smooth. And then once it flashes, boom, right there, it's already ready to come off. It is so freaking quick. Almost to the point of being too quick, in my opinion, um, unless you're used to it. And then it's like, oh boy, I gotta get this off. Now, I will say, I've left this, I've been doing half hoods, an entire door when I'm working with paint, and it goes on very easy. So you can see it's all sweated up now. You wipe this. It is almost one wipe and it's completely gone. That is why I love Gion Moe's Evo. And what really attracted me to Gion in general, it's just because you're not sitting here wiping and wiping and wiping. That's done, it's coated, it looks absolutely perfect. Let me grab the scan grip light over here. Of course, you can see the scratches in there, but there's no haze, there's nothing. I'm not worried about high spots here because it's easy to get off. Now, I will say, if you do leave high spots with this, what it will actually do is those little sweat beads in there will actually crystallize and they're a pain in the butt to get off. So you need to be diligent with your wiping. Now, one of the things I didn't mention with wheel coatings, why I'm so interested in how they apply, if you have a very spoky wheel, this one's a little on the easy side, except for areas up here. I can see I even just left a little there. Wipes right off, even you know, 45 seconds a minute later. If you have a coating that's hard to get off and you're really having to scrub little areas like this, that's a high, high likelihood you're gonna get high spots there and getting into corners and everything like that. That's why I've really switched away from SiO2 based ceramic coatings, went to polyxylazane. It is just insane, the feel. I mean, this up here, is completely dull feeling. This is just crazy smooth. So pretty blown away with this coating. In my opinion, one of the easiest to do. I'm again, curious to see what Gion Rim feels like. I've never tested the product and I'm anxious to come back to Deluxe. So I'm gonna get the face of the wheel coated here, get the back of the wheel coated. As far as rankings go, this versus C5, this is much easier to do. When I did the entire face of the wheel um, on C4, I found that I was kind of having to go back, look in little areas like this. It's not that it was bad. It's, you know, kind of middle of the range, ease of use of ceramic coatings, but Moe's Evo, man, knocks it out of the park. And that's why it's become really one of my favorite paint coatings and wheel coatings out there. We are over the halfway mark now, and we are on our third wheel. This is our driver's side rear wheel and we're gonna be using Gion Rim. Now this is a new coating for me. I've never tried this, and this is also their second generation to the rim coating. Anytime you hear Evo in Gion nomenclature, means it's a new redesigned product from, I guess, last year, if you will. Now this one sits right around second place as far as price, but this is also the least durable, or so it says from Gion. So I'm anxious to test this out. 30 mil bottle in here, so let's see what's inside. I genuinely have no idea how this is installed, so we're gonna have to play with that. Let's open this up. And 
Inside, of course, we have Gion Rim. Really interesting bottle here, kind of a frosted white. That looks very nice. And then we have an applicator block, okay, with some suede applicators. Now, I don't mind these applicators. I'll actually use these quite often, especially when I'm doing trim coatings. These are also really good for very intricate wheels. Probably not for this. Again, we're gonna go back to the auto fiber, but really the technical way you're supposed to use these is essentially wrap it around this block and then you have this very solid structure. So getting in here can be a pain in the butt. This is very original ceramic coating days. This is how everybody ceramic coated cars. I remember doing this with um, C Quartz UK 3.0. This is how you would do it. You would tuck it in the sides, go over it. It was kind of nice though, because you could just toss one of the suede applicators, grab a fresh one, you're ready to go. You're not going through very expensive applicators. Also inside the box here is the coating manual. Now, I looked in the other Gionmo's Evo box and it did not have the wheel one in here. So I'm gonna take a second to read through this and let's figure out how this is installed. Quickly read through the instruction manual for Gion rim here. Very interesting. It says to apply it thick. Okay, I can understand that. But it also says to wipe it immediately. So it says if you have a very spoky wheel to split it up into sections. So first off the bat, that could get a little annoying. For example, when I did Moe's Evo, I actually did the entire face of the wheel. That's how much workability time you have with that specific coating. So I'll play around with this. Maybe I'll coat just the face of this, not try and get in the sides here and I'll wipe one side off immediately and give this like 30 seconds to a minute and see how it goes. So it wants it pretty darn thick on here. So this goes on reasonably thick, holy cow. Yeah, feels totally different from even G-Technic. So it does say wipe it immediately. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, seems a little strange to me, but okay. Wow, okay. So you can see I wipe that first wipe. There's still a little here. That's not that big of a deal. Come back in and wipe that off. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Man, that looks absolutely silky smooth. Hmm. Okay, so that actually felt really good. It went on and it felt, I, I, I was gonna say, this is gonna be a pain in the butt to get off. It went on really thick. It was like kind of hard, like you were wiping not necessarily honey, but something a little sticky onto there when you wiped it off. Wow, immediately cleared up. So that's pretty cool. Again, one thing I really have a problem with this coating is just a lifetime um, or lifespan of it. Six months, if that's truly all this is, oh, I mean, it's just, in my opinion, it's not worth even doing at that point. So I'm anxious to see what this does over the next two years. If it fails, it fails. We can throw something else on there. But I mean, for me, yeah, this is just too time intensive to do every six months. I would rather see you guys use something like Gion wet coat that is literally clean the wheel, spray it on while it's wet, pressure wash it off, and it's coated for, you know, two to three months. Like, this should be a full strength ceramic coating. Maybe they're just being ultra conservative, depending on like, hey, maybe you do track days. You're really only gonna get six months out of this where you know people driving their vehicle may get a little bit longer. So that's pretty interesting, but I wanna play with this a little bit more. So I'm coating the back of the wheel right now, still again with Gion rim. Um, yeah, have some more thoughts on this product doing the whole wheel. The more I use this, Honestly, the less I'm liking it, um, it flashes too quick for sure. Now, this is something, you know, I guess as a Gion certified installer that I've gotten really used to. And in most circumstances, I've really come to love how quick they are. Um, but this being an immediate wipe time. Now, I do think there's some room for flexibility there. I do think realistically, you probably have, in all honesty, probably a minute to two minutes to wipe it off. But when you're doing, especially very complex wheel faces, trying to get it removed quickly, it definitely gets annoying. So 
what I look for in a ceramic coating, again, I, I do so many coatings that having a coating that's annoying to use is not really that fun. Um, now, if again, if the performance is worth it, okay, I'll take that trade off. But you know, with like infinite base type one that I use for paint coatings, it goes on so smoothly. It's very similar to um, Moe's Evo there, how you install it. It just has, you know, thicker film build, a little bit more um, serious professional grade coating, but it, it's just so easy to use. Whereas, you know, this to me is, kind of annoying to use. I, I really don't like it. What I found on the front is I kept having to wipe other areas because you're putting so much on there. It goes on very thick compared to, again, Moe's Evo or even C4, I feel like goes on nice and smooth with a light little layer. This feels a lot thicker and you really feel that when you're installing it. So when you're doing small section by section, you just keep chasing yourself around the wheel. And I literally spent three times more just wiping it than actually installing it where most coatings are just like boom, 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 done. So that's something that's, I guess, a little bit of a trade-off here. Again, I would say, you know, so far out of the three, I'm the least impressed out of this, um, especially given, again, I'm gonna keep harping on this, their six month longevity, I'm just not thrilled with that. So I'm gonna check the wheel face one more time. We'll get this thrown on the car. And then finally, the one I've been putting off, Car Pro Deluxe. Last and final wheel here. So this is going to be going on the passenger rear. And of course we have C Quartz Deluxe here. Now, again, this is a coating I used to use way back in the day when I was installing C Quartz UK 3.0. C Quartz honestly came into the ceramic coating market and really struck a chord with a lot of people. They have had some seriously amazing ceramic coatings, especially early on. Now they've progressed, of course, but honestly, I do kind of feel like CarPro has fallen off the map a little bit and other companies have started to come up. That's just my personal opinion. I don't hear a ton of people talk about CarPro that much anymore. So this is the cheapest of the bunch coming in at $39.99 for a 30 ounce bottle, which is kind of surprising because I really felt like you know, they'd be pretty middle ground. I do think it's important that folks understand in the detailing industry, just because a product is expensive, doesn't mean it's gonna be the best product. There's a lot of phenomenal products at very economical prices that you'd actually be pretty shocked by. I mean, for example, the PNS line is one of the cheapest detailing products out there and nearly every single product I test, I'm blown away with. So this could really do well in this test. And honestly, I kind of expect it to. My personal expectation is Basically, Moe's Evo is gonna be the clear winner. This may be tied or second. Then we'll have g Technic C5 and then Gion Rim last. That's my real expectation with this, but I'm anxious to see. Now, let's check out what's inside of the box here. Nice packaging here, as always, from CarPro. Pop this open. So here we have our 30 mil bottle. That bright blue color really takes me back to doing ceramic coatings. That's pretty cool to see for sure. So in here, not too much going on, but we have, does this look familiar as I drop all the stickers on here? Does this look familiar? Mm -hmm. CarPro is really the originator of this technique. Gion, of course, has copied that in their rim packaging. So it's cool to see that. Again, not going to be using that. It also comes with installation instructions, which I'm gonna pull up here. So nice little informative sheet here. So use CarPro eraser or something similar on here. Wet the applicator with a strip of deluxe spread evenly across a small area at a time. When applying, it is very important to work in one area at a time as evenly as possible. Start in one corner and work outward slowly. Do not attempt coating a huge area at once. Very sound advice. I'm glad they say that on here. Especially if you're picking up ceramic coating for your first time, you're doing your first wheel coating, that is extremely, extremely important. So glad to see they said that. Apply nice and evenly as you go. Do not try to spread too thin, but be sure to work in an even coat the first minute before moving to the next overlapping area. Wipe off the surface after one minute. Easy peasy. And just if you're curious, on texture trim, you actually install this and don't wipe it off, which is okay, pretty interesting. So, seems pretty straightforward. So basically one minute on, we're gonna bring you guys in closer 
and let's see how CarPro Deluxe does. So we've got Deluxe cracked open here and we're going to apply a single line down. That smell brings me back. I literally, this feels exactly the same. We'll see. So very thick feeling like you're wiping almost, you know, warmed honey onto the surface. So it's not necessarily a terrible thing. Um, I'm very extremely particular about how the coatings feel. And honestly, this is why I went away from CarPro. I just, I do not like coatings that feel like that. This is just my opinion. You may think it's totally acceptable, but uh, yeah, it goes on reasonably thick. Curious to see, this again is just a time exercise here. It's not supposed to bead. It doesn't seem like it's gonna rainbow. It's just, hey, wait one minute. Now, I really think a lot of companies do better when there is a very definitive, hey, it's ready to come off. So, you know, for example, Moe's Evo sweats and do, it's done ready to come off. You know, something like Adam's Advanced um, Graphene Ceramic Coating, what it does is it actually rainbows and then it flashes off to very tiny sweat beads, but that's a nice indication of, hey, it's ready to come off. So I'd like to see technology, you know, kind of evolve of that. This genuinely feels like the same exact product I used eight years ago. I mean, the smell is exactly the same. I remember how thick it feels going on. Um, yeah, I've since moved away from it. So that honestly says a lot. Again, this might be a product that you wanna use two towels on. That's something I should have mentioned um, with the G on rim. What I ended up doing, did my first wipe. I filmed the back segment saying it was kind of annoying. Went in with the second towel and that really helped it quite a bit. I'm just really used to um, coatings that are kind of one to two towels at a time. And I thought in a small surface area, okay, not gonna need multiple towels, but it definitely did. So. I think we've talked for, yeah, about a minute here or so. Let's see how this goes. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I don't like it at all. And, and this is my personal opinion. This may not annoy you. I don't like this thick feeling coating um, at all. I just don't. I, I really, really don't, especially with other coatings out there. So at first glance, I hope you can see all of this kind of left over here, not a big deal. Again, this may be something we need to double wipe, maybe even triple wipe, just depending on, um, yeah, do not like the feeling of it at all. Now, does this make a coating install harder? In my impression, yes, because Moe's Evo, I mean, I know it like the back of my hand now. I can just throw this thing on here, boom, it's done. This, I have a feeling I'm gonna have to really go back like of a high spot up here. So you gotta wipe that, um, high spots down here. So I really do think, um, you know, with a minute, depending on your level of ceramic coating expertise, you could do the whole wheel face. Um, I would probably, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But yeah, I mean, it's just high spots everywhere. So. I'd probably do the whole wheel, do a first wipe, grab a second towel, wipe it again. I think that's the ideal way to do it. They don't make any notes of that in the instruction manual. So I do think people are gonna have a hard time. This is very similar to Gion Rim. I mean, it just, every time you wipe, it goes everywhere. It's just such a thick amount of ceramic coating in there and it really spreads quite a bit. So let me back this camera up and let's coat this wheel. We'll chat a little bit more about this and uh, yeah, final wheel. I tell you what, I am just having so much fun with really testing out the EV6. I just think this is the coolest thing to be able to do to your own car and really start seeing differences between all these products. I think this test is extremely cool. I'm glad I selected the products I did because first off, they're all at different price points. They all install completely different. And I think they're all going to have very different capabilities of keeping the wheels cleaner longer. I think we're gonna see some that you can almost just rinse off and not really have to scrub. Now, in terms of cleaning, I am going to clean every single wheel exactly the same way. I am not going to be using very harsh chemicals to try to get them to fail. I don't think that's customer representative. I think what is customer representative is to wash and maintain and properly keep the car looking as nice as humanly possible 
because that's really what you should be doing with a ceramic coating. You shouldn't be spending thousands of dollars to get your car coated and run it through a brush car wash. To me, that makes absolutely no sense. So I'm going to take care of it and maintain it using gentle chemicals, using different wheel cleaners on these, but we'll do them individually each at their respective times. So I'm super excited for this. Now, in terms of install, these all install very differently. If I had to say which one I preferred over the other, Gion, Mose, Evo, bar none, easiest to install. G-Technic C5, pretty darn nice install. I would say over the other two, way easier to do. No fuss, no mess, no really grabbing second towels. Although I would say if you're doing four wheels at a time, it'd be nice to have maybe four towels. You could probably get away with two, having one wipe, flip the towel, yada, yada, yada. These, I just don't love the install on. C quartz, again, same thing that they've been doing for literally years. And I can't say that I love it at all. So I hope that came through on camera. These are my opinions. You can absolutely disagree with me. So we've got that out of the way. We understand the price points. We understand where these sit. Now it really comes to performance. Which one is gonna keep the wheels cleaner longer? Which one is gonna clean up easiest? And which one is going to last the longest? I definitely think we're gonna have some failed coatings by the time this car gets turned in on lease. So what I want to ask you guys is a few things. Things. What do you think as far as updates you want on this video series? And do you want them separated? Do you want the windshield in one video, the wheels in another video, the paint coatings? Do you want it all in one video? And then what kind of frequency do you want these videos in? Do you want them every month? Do you want them every six months? Let me know. I'm very anxious to see what you guys think. I was thinking about every single time we wash this car, boom, make a video update it and just see how it goes. It may sometimes be every other week. It may be a month. It just really depends on what this car's condition is. So thanks so much for sticking through this extremely long video. I know these are long, but you guys really do enjoy them that actually want to learn and understand the ins and outs of detailing. So thank you so much for watching another out of spec detailing video here from Clear Detailing in Northern Colorado. Stay tuned for the paint coatings because that is coming right up. We'll see you in the next one soon. Bye-bye. <music>